friends, I'm Megan, and welcome to Church at Home. I'm so excited you're here today. We are learning all about how we are made by God. And when God made you and me, He had good plans for us. In fact, His plans are even greater and so much better than anything we could ask or even imagine. And our big idea tells us more about that. It says, I was made for more. Are you ready to say that with me? Repeat after me. I was made for more. Great job. When we were made by God, He made us for more. Hmm. What is the more God made us for? Well, we might have our own plans or dreams and ideas of what we want to do, but God has even more, even bigger, and even better dreams and ideas for us. How amazing is that? Friends, God loves you so much, and when He made you, He thought only good things about you. I know a song about that. It says, so many good things on your mind for me. And when we sing that, we are talking about God. So let's get ready to sing a song together all about being God's masterpiece. Stand up with me and let's sing this song together. Hey friends, we're gonna sing this song called Masterpiece. In the Bible, it says that we are God's masterpiece. We are the best thing that He has created. So when we sing this song out, I want you to know that you are the best thing that God has created. So let's sing it out. Before I took my first breath You formed me? You formed me with your hands All right, let's do some thumbs up. So Masterpiece. always so much fun singing with you and I loved singing about being God's masterpiece. God loves us so much and he has good plans for us. Those plans are more than we could ever imagine. I know this is true because of a special book that I have right here. Do you know what book this is? It's the Bible. It's God's special book for us that tells us stories about real people in real places from a long time ago. And in the Bible, we get to read about people who chose to trust God. And guess what? God showed them that they were made for more. 
One of these people was named Moses. Moses trusted God and saw that he was made for more by God. Are you ready to hear about Moses from the Bible? Let's put on our thinking caps and our listening ears, and let's watch our Bible story. Stories of the Bible, Moses and the Red Sea. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time where Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake. Uh -oh. So Moses ran away from Egypt to the land of Midian. Many years later, God called Moses back to Egypt to rescue his people with the help of his brother Aaron. The Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go, and God showed his power throughout all Egypt by sending plagues. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard, and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up and heard a great cry in Egypt, Huh? for there was not an Egyptian house in which someone was not dead. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and told them to leave Egypt with the Israelites. So the Israelites immediately left Egypt and made their way for the Promised Land, taking with them many riches from Egypt. They took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. God led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God told Moses to have the people camp along the shore of the Red Sea. Okay, got it. We're stopping here. God told Moses that the Egyptians would come after them, but that God would show his glory and power through this. When word reached Pharaoh that the Israelites had gone, Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. The Egyptians found the Israelites camped along the shore of the sea. As Pharaoh and his armies came close, the Israelites panicked. They cried out to God and asked Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then God said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. All right. As night came, the pillar of cloud became fire, and it went between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and God opened a path through the water with a strong wind. Whoa! The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Come on, are you? So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians chased the Israelites into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, God looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, God said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Who got it? Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but God swept them into the sea. That is how God rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God had shown against the Egyptians, they were amazed. They put their faith in God and in his servant, Moses. Wow, what a great story about Moses. God chose Moses to lead his people, called the Israelites, out of Egypt. And God helped Moses do what God asked him to do. 
God's good plan for Moses was to save God's people. And God had prepared this plan long before Moses was even born. There's a verse in the Bible that reminds us of all the good plans God has for us because we were made for more. But uh oh, it's all covered in bubbles. Can you help me pop them all so we can see our Bible verse? Get those popping fingers ready and let's pop all the bubbles. Okay, everybody, it's bubble popping time. A bubble on the left, a bubble on the right, bubble up high and bubble down low. There's a bubble, there's a bubble, there's a bubble, there's a bubble. Wait, that's not a bubble, that's a bubble. Does everybody know what the bubble is? I don't, but I'm gonna find out when we pop the bubbles. Bubble popping party people, let's keep it going, yay! Pop them to the left, pop them to the right, pop them over here and pop them by the side. That's it, all right, all right, keep going, yay! We're almost there, we're at the pop. Exactly 23 and a half bubbles left. Okay, ready, go, one, two, three, keep going. That's a bubble, that's a bubble, that's a bubble, that's a bubble. Oh, too many bees, ah, <laughs> Pop them over here. Pop them over there, pop them on the ground, and pop them in the air. Pop them everywhere, yay! Good job popping bubbles, everyone. And look, we can see our Bible verse now. It says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Ephesians 2.10. Wow, that Bible verse tells us God made us to do the good things he had planned for us. Things he planned before we were even born. So friends, stand up with me and let's get ready to sing and dance Ephesians 2.10 together. This song is Ephesians 2.10. It's all about how we are God's masterpiece, the best thing that he has made. So we're gonna get out our paintbrushes and dance with our paintbrushes. Can you move them around like this? Good job. Let's sing, for we are God's masterpiece. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Two thumbs up so we can do the good things. So we can do the good things, the good things He planned for us. Long Together. Here we go. Ephesians 2 10. All right, keep dancing. Let me see ya. Good job. We're going to sing For We Are God's Masterpiece. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So we can do the good things. Thumbs up. So we We're going to sing out Ephesians 2.10 again. I want everyone to sing it out as loud as you can. Ephesians 2.10. Good job. All right, now we're going to go down really low. Can you get even lower? And we're going to jump. Here we go. One, two, three, jump. All right, let me see you dancing and painting. Good job. Can we go in a circle? Good job. Let's sing, for we are God's masterpiece. Everyone together. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew. In Christ Jesus, yeah. So we can do the good things, thumbs up. So we can do the good things, the good things he planned for us. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. All right, we're going to sing Ephesians 2.10 again. I want to hear everyone sing it out. Here we go. Ephesians 2.10. All right, let me see you painting. And keep painting a circle. Great. 
great job singing and dancing. God's plans are even more than we could ever think or imagine because they are so good. But do you remember from the Bible story that it wasn't always easy for Moses to trust God? There were even times he was afraid. So even if we feel afraid or not sure how something will work out, we can trust that God has a good plan for us and that we were made to do even more than we could even imagine. We can remember the good things God has done for people in the Bible, like Moses, and believe that God has good things planned for us too. I know some friends who are learning more about being made by God. It's Izzy and Sarah, and this week they are learning all about being made for more while making something special. Hmm, <laughs> I wonder what Sarah and Izzy have planned today. Let's put on our listening ears and our thinking caps and let's go to Izzy's art studio. Hi friends, I'm Izzy. And I'm Sarah. Welcome to my art studio. Today, we are gonna make a surprise. What is it? It's a surprise for you two. Oh, exciting, what do we do? Well, we are going to color this together. No, you'll see. Just trust me. Let's get coloring. What does it mean to trust you, Miss Sarah? That's a good question. It means to believe someone will do what they say. So when I say you'll see what the surprise is, you can trust that I'm telling you the truth, Izzy. Oh, I think you are telling the truth, even though I want to know right now. Yeah, and there's someone you can trust who will always do what he says. Not Bestos, though I think he would try. But God, he is the one who will always do what he says. He has a good plan for us and made us to do more than we can imagine. How do you know that? Because the Bible tells us that God can do more than we can imagine. And it also shows us that this is true in lots of stories where God does amazing things. Can you tell me one of those stories? Sure. All right, so there was a man named Moses who lived a long time ago. One day, Moses was with his sheep in a field when they saw a bush on fire. <gasps> right? But the fiery bush was actually a way that God talked to Moses and told him he was gonna do amazing things through him. God had more planned for Moses. Was Moses scared? Yes. But God helped Moses do the things he wanted him to do. Moses led God's people, the Israelites, out of Egypt where they were being treated badly. And it happened in a really amazing way. Like a rocket ship? Mm, no, even cooler. They were at the edge of the Red Sea and the Egyptians were coming to catch them and bring them back. But guess what happened? God sent a giant boat? Nope. God made the water split in two with a mighty wind, and the Israelites walked right through the middle of the sea on dry ground. What? That can't happen. It can with God's power. He is that strong, and Moses saw God do amazing things, more than he could have imagined when he was in the field taking care of his sheep. God can do more than we can imagine, too. We are made for so much more because God made us and he has amazing plans for us. Wow, God is so amazing. But I think I might be a little scared if that was me. Me too. But even if I'm afraid or not sure how something will work out, I can trust that God has a good plan for me and remember our big idea. God made me for more. Can you repeat that after me in a big voice? God made me. God made me. For more. For more. Now, to remember this, I want you to see that this piece of cardboard was actually made for more. What? Yeah, you want to see? Yes, is this my surprise? It sure is. I'll show you. All right, everyone, let's imagine. What do you think this pile of cardboard is for? For painting? sliding down a hill? Hmm, those are good guesses. Let's see.
such a fun surprise, right? This pile of cardboard was made for so much more. It was made to be a play for it. I love it! I wanna play, I wanna play! Yeah, let's play! And friends, remember that you were made for more. God has even more, even bigger, and even better plans and dreams and ideas for you. I'm so excited to see what that is for you. Me too! God loves you so much! Yes, he does. Come back next time for some more art time! We love you, friends! Bye! Bye. That was such a fun surprise. Izzy had to trust Sarah. And because Izzy chose to believe Sarah would do what she said, Izzy got to see that pile of cardboard was made for more. Sarah was able to make a really cool play fort for them to play with. You know, we learned that we were made for more too. And I think we are way greater than cardboard, don't you? That's because God made us for so much more. So let's spend some time talking to God right now. Put five fingers here, five fingers there, and put them together for a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for making us so special. Thank you that you made us for so much more. Would you help us trust you to do the good things you have planned for us? And would you give us people who love you, who will help us when we feel scared or aren't sure what's going to happen? Thanks, God. We love you. Amen. Great job, friends. Before we go, I have one last question. Do you remember our big idea? Let's say it together one more time. One, two, three. I was made for more. You did it. Remember, you were made special by God. He loves you so much. And I've had so much fun with you learning together and celebrating that we are all made by God. We'll see you next time. Bye. Wow.